Hey guys, Shaw here, and today we are looking up to the sky in Spires of Ascension Dungeon to see how a tank can help maximize damage by using a line of sight mechanic to group up dangerous mobs quickly. After pugging as a DPS the last few weeks, there's a certain pull or two in Spires of Ascension that I don't feel like a lot of tanks are doing a great job at handling, and I believe it's the mechanics of the Forsworn Skirmisher that are unclear. The Forsworn Skirmisher is a mob that you'll see in a variety of pulls throughout the dungeon, but there's a very specific group after the first boss that I that typically yields several deaths on fortified weeks, or is just a massive time sink in a dungeon that, you know, already has a pretty brutal timer due to flying between the different platforms. So, so let's take a look at what you can do as a tank to help minimize the group damage, as well as maximize the effectiveness of your cooldowns to help neutralize this unit. Let's take a walk. Taking a quick look at the Mythic Dungeon Tools, which is an add-on that a lot of people who delve into Mythic Plus will utilize, you can see that the Forest Horn Skirmisher actually only has two abilities, and one of these is actually incorrect. Uh, it's going to say that it can go into stealth. These mobs cannot go into stealth, actually. Though, this hurdle ability is a strange mechanic because it doesn't actually say when the condition that this will be casted in. So the hurl ability from the Forest Horn Skirmisher will actually be casted if the target who has threat on the mob is not within melee range. So as a tank player, it's extremely important that on pull, you're making sure that you're gaining aggro on all of these mobs, and that if a DPS does happen to rip, that they're moving into melee, because the melee from these mobs are actually going to hurt significantly less than the hurl. Obviously, you would prefer to have aggro on all of the mobs, but if a DPS happens to, you know, rip from you, you would want to move into melee. So, and I about... 10 seconds into pulling this mob, it will leap backwards. It will disengage from the tank. This mechanic actually isn't shown in the dungeon journal. I'm not sure if my, maybe my version is just out of date. So you can plan for this. So you can either plan for this by using line of sight, or you can use abilities like death grip, Ursal's vortex to help neutralize these effects. Uh, Warrior Kyrian spear, which is a little bit more of a specific niche, will can actually be used here to stop that leap from happening. Like I mentioned, they will leap away from the target they currently have threat on. So if you're a tank player, you'll see in a clip that I'll show in a second, is that you wanna make sure you're aiming these mobs that you're facing their backs towards a wall or towards some type of alcove where you can easily line of sight and regroup these mobs. Something I'll try to talk about in the video as well is a system that's it's called nudging as a tank player, which you use by moving in and out of a target's hitbox very slightly to help push it in the direction you want to move it to. This can be very efficient for helping group these mobs up because once they disengage away from you, trying to get them back up to be stacked is going to help maximize both your damage and threat capabilities as well as your group's damage capabilities. With that out of the way, let's take a look into a clip of how my group handles this. So some groups will split this into two separate pulls. Some groups will uh, try to pull it all together using LO, uh, line of sight tactics, though not all of them use it in the most effective way. So let's let's take a look. All right, so this clip is actually from a 21 Spires. This was from a few weeks ago. This is a fortified bolstering quaking week. The composition that we're running is mostly a caster cleave. We have, of course, our demonology warlock, frost mage, and an elemental shaman. Two of these guys are pugs, so I don't know them. They don't really know the strategies that I necessarily use, though this is going to be seen a little bit more in higher end play, so, you know, your 20s are higher. So this is just a key that we're messing around in. Um, so what I see a lot of groups do is the one skirmisher pack is actually chilling up here. We're actually going to change the color of that. What do we use? What do we use? We'll use, like, a pink. So what I see a lot of groups do is the tank will run up, they'll try to grab these mobs, and then they try to bring them all the way down the stairs and, like, LOS behind this this pillar here. This is not a great spot. I've also seen a few uh, a few players like go up on this bench thing over here and you can actually snap the mobs on top of this but then obviously like there's evading and if people are popping cooldowns and everything's evading you're not going to get you know your resets and your cooldowns you're not going to optimize those as well and it just becomes more of a shit show and it becomes very hectic. They start jumping all over the place anyways because tanks don't know where to stand. So the solution to this is you might see in, you know, higher end keys or a, a few different tanks do this is there's actually this really cool spot right over here. So pausing the video really quick, there is this pillar that creates this lip here. And then this is like, uh, this is walled off. So this is what the alcove looks like. So you can create a nice little LOS place right in this corner. 
Um, and then also the mobs can't leap around. There's nothing they can get stuck on. There's no evade bugs that are going to be happening in this corner. So all around, really good spot to stand. Now, of course, it depends on your composition because sometimes these mobs will leap back immediately as, you, as soon as you pull them in here. So I'm going to show you what that's going to look like and how I handle that. So once all my group is stacked again, we are pugging. So I was kind of like telling them, hey, you know, move over here into this corner. I have myself marked. Once everyone's here, we have to we do have to be careful of quaking on this week. Um, other weeks you have to be careful of our like, like things like sanguine um, can get pretty, pretty crazy in this corner. So I'm running out. I'm grabbing the right pack of skirmishers with shield. Then I'm coming and grabbing the uh, ether drivers as well as the one skirmisher. So right now we're looking at a seven pack pull because it's seven targets. We're going to see um, icy, icy veins reset from our frost mage. Um, as well as we're going to make other cooldowns a little bit more effective. Chain Lightning is going to be hitting all five targets. Earthquake Disruptions. Um, we're just trying to maximize CDs and our damage in this pull. So what's going to happen is these mobs are going to come in. I'm going to slow down the video just a little bit. So these mobs are going to come in. And as soon as they do, we've been in combat for about 10 seconds. You can see the timer down here, which means that by from when I pulled the first mob, those three mobs on the right-hand side, their timer is going to kick in. They're going to disengage as soon as they're within sight of me so knowing that i have a few options i can try to los them into like this wall here or i just have to accept the fact that they're going to probably leap away and then i'm going to have to maintain line of sight in this corner here right on this spot and they'll run right back in i know it's kind of hard to see with the pen so what you're going to see is you're going to see a few of them leaping away i tried to get a blind there as you saw which will help disorient them for just a second or two so I can try to get out into position. And as you can see, it was fairly successful. We had a skirmisher jump this way. We had a skirmisher jump this way. But then we had one that jumped out this way, which is obviously a bad thing because now he's not stacked up. But luckily, because we have this little lip here, we're going to be able to move back in. So I dipped extremely low there. Um, I was just not honestly not ready. Um, plus Paladin is something that I'm still trying to learn a little bit um, and trying to get better at because obviously some of you might know that I'm a Guardian Druid main. Um, I've been trying to experiment with other tanks, so I'm working on my, my Paladin and my Monk right now, but that's besides the point. So this Skirmisher is way out here, so what I'm doing is I'm moving back into this corner here to make sure that he's being line of sight back in so you can see him running in. And then the next time these mobs are going to disengage is not for like another like 30 seconds or so. So I'm now going to turn around, give our Quaking players some room, or our DPS some room with Quaking, and now I'm just facing them towards this alcove. So they're never going to jump out of range of me. And even if they do and start casting Hurl at my allies, I can then sidestep right to this pillar here and they'll line and stack right back up. So pretty easy to do. We're going to let it just kind of keep playing out so you guys can see. So their melees are not going to hit hard. Basically, just base mitigation is going to be really good to just have up here. So Shield of the Righteous. Um, and obviously, like, insert any other thing here. Shield block, iron fur. You can always keep backing up just a little bit. One just leapt away right there. He's now casting Hurl. I actually don't think I noticed it here, so I think I'm just kind of chilling. Another one disengaged. So now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to move LOS a little bit so you can see that I'm positioning myself right here on this corner. So these mobs, the skirmishers that were in this back corner, are now going to be running back into melee. And because this is a tight alcove, Pretty much wherever they disengage to, I'll be able to line of sight them. So they are getting a couple bolstering stacks, so these guys are going to start to hurt. So as this pull kind of dies off, I really have to make sure that I'm trying to stand within melee range. We saw a hurl there, actually, just like you could see them chunking. So I didn't do the greatest job here. Um, I was a little bit more focused on um, the ether drivers that were still up because those are the dangerous mobs here with their casts. Uh, magical damage is tanks are much more susceptible to magical damage than normal. Um, or like physical attacks. So making sure that you're making like keeping those interrupted and keeping those locked down are going to be a little more important as long as you're not getting one shot. But again, in higher keys, making sure you're in melee range for these roll casts is going to be really, really important. So we're getting a few stuns. And then these are mobs that you don't want to start kiting from as a tank. Sometimes tanks get aggressive and they're like, all right, I'm going to start moving towards the next pull as things die off. On a bolstering week, on a fortified week, in a high key like this, these are not the mobs you want to run away from because those hurls, as you saw, we're just like doing 80 to 90% of our DPS's health. So they die at the same time. And then we're going to, you know, make our way over to obviously like the rest of the rest of our route. So that is how you handle that pull. Now, of course, if you don't have a lot of coordination and pugs, um, it's kind of hard. But honestly, just telling people to come stack on you up up in that corner there is the best way that I have found. Again, this was a group with two pugs. Um, the shaman and the mage were pugs. Uh, so like we typed out before the dungeon, like we're going to LOS on this spot uh, precisely. All right. So this is a different clip from, 
I think this is a long time ago. These are some old players I used to play with. Um, unfortunately, some of them don't play anymore. But we're looking at a comp that's a little different. So I'm on my Guardian Druid this time around. Um, we have a Frost Mage, Windwalker Monk, Marksman Hunter, uh, and an R Druid. So the effects are a little different. We still have that Fortified, which is, you know, nice and means that these mobs are nice and beefy. We also have Sanguine and Necrotic to worry about this time around. So that's why we're not, this clip is different and we're not pulling those mobs into the corner because, you know, you can end up sanguine healing everything. Unfortunately, we didn't interrupt the hurls, which is something you typically want to try to do. Um, things like leg sweep, roar. Uh, there I had a late war stomp. It wasn't that ideal. But what's going to happen is I'm actually going to be dropping Ursal's Vortex here. So it's down in this corner and you can kind of see it. I just dropped it. And what's going to happen is these mobs are basically immediately going to leap away from me right around that like eight, nine second mark. So that's what they did. And then our goal is to keep these mobs locked down. We do have access to a second Ursal's Vortex if we would like to, but we're basically doing that based on if the mobs are actually going to leave away or not, or if they're about to die, right? So it's Sanguine Week. We want to make sure that they're not um, perfectly stacked and that they are leaping away and utilizing that because we don't, we want to minimize the Sanguine Healing. So the Ursal Vortex does go down here. Um, it's kind of hard to see. So I start kiting away to make sure that they're not going to be grouped up on top of each other. As you saw, one got gripped back. That one disengaged and the Ursal's Vortex faded. Um, so now this time they are spread. They are casting those Hurls, uh, but luckily both of them were at me. And then um, they're nice and spread for that Sanguine. So unfortunately, I didn't really do too much nudging here. There wasn't really a need to. If you get that initial like Ursal's Vortex down, it's really easy. Something I do want to point out that we'll back it up a little bit. Um, let's see if I can get a good shot in this, in this clip for it. So this lip right here is actually a great thing to LOS on. So what you can do is once if you go into this pole, and you face their backs towards this pillar, they'll leap back, and then you can LOS on this side or on this side and keep walking back and forth. And what this is gonna allow you to do is it's gonna allow you to bait out the hurl cast so the, the hurls won't be casted if you're not in line of sight. You can also utilize it to make sure that Sanguine isn't dropping on the mobs. Uh, you can also do something similar on this pillar here. As you can see, it's kind of like, you know, shaped, it's protruding a little bit. Um, and you can also, I think, do it on this like fountain area back here. Um, behind the, the 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 tags but this is one of my favorite spots to actually do it is on this first one that i showed you right here um because the pillar is big enough for you to be able to just keep walking around um in line of sight so if they do disengage to either side you can quickly stack them back up as um on top of minimizing the hurl damage it's also going to be coming out so that's how you do, would do that so thank you guys so much for watching i hope you guys learned something from this video i know it's a quick one um i'm just kind of getting ready for 9.2 uh, ramping up so i'm trying to get out some dungeon tips nothing's going to be specific around like the tormented effects because we're going to be getting rid of that very soon here it looks like 9.2 ptr is wrapping up so hopefully i'll be able to get on and do some testing with that but uh time is just it's always going to be the excuse so uh, again i hope you guys enjoyed i hope you guys are staying happy healthy and i'll catch you all in the next one take care